بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off a couple of weeks ago So we left off here <coughs> at the start of this lesson where the Shaykh inshallah will cover um, will cover these various topics entitled here al jahiliya ignorance al fisk which will be explained as well uh, uh, disobedience um, uh, al dhalal misguidance uh, al ridda um, uh, leaving the fold of islam uh, turning away from the uh, from islam as a religion al ridda and the Shaykh says he'll explain its types and he'll explain its rulings as well pertaining to those different types for each of uh, uh, these topics and subjects inshallah that we will uh, uh, that we'll discuss today inshallah so um, the Shaykh starts off with al jahiliya ignorance and uh, he mentions this so we'll read Arabic first inshallah he says قبل الإسلام من الجهل بالله ورسله وشرع الدين والمفاخرة بالأنساب والكبر والتجبر وغير ذلك نسبة إلى الجهل الذي هو عدم العلم أو عدم اتباع العلم. So in this first sentence, the Sheikh he mentions he says that that ignorance. It's what it's uh, an example of what the uh, uh, the Arabs were upon before the coming of Islam. So the ignorance related to the their ignorance of Allah, His messengers, and uh, Allah's laws, and um, and also it's related to um, their uh, pompousness about their lineages. Mukhafara bilan sab, Mufakhara bilan sab. So the this uh, great pride that they had about their lineage and arrogance and the likes. And other than that, the Sheikh says, and other than that, and he gives a few examples just for us here. And he goes, this is connected to the 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 ignorance, and that is a lack of knowledge. The uh, the, the lack of presence of knowledge. Or, or he says, um, the lack of following that knowledge. If one has that knowledge, then following it and sticking to it and doing what's required of that knowledge. The Shaykh, he goes on to say, قَالَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِبْنُ تَيْمِيَةِ فَإِنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَعْلَمْ الْحَقْ فَهُوَ جَاهِلٌ جَهْلًا بَسِيطًا فإن اعتقد خلافه فهو جاهل جهلا مركبا فإن تبين ذلك فالناس قبل بعث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم كانوا في جاهلية كانوا في جاهلية منسوبة إلى الجهل فإنما كانوا عليه من من الأقوال والأعمال إنما أحدثه لهم جاهل وإنما يفعله جاهل وكذلك كل ما يخالف ما جاء بالمرسلون من من يهودية ونصرانية فهو جاهلية وتلك كانت الجاهلية العامة فأما بعد ما بعث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم قد تكون في مصر دون مصر كما هي في دار الكفار وقد تكون في شخص دون شخص الرجل قبل أن يسلم 
فَإِنَّهُ فِي جَاهِلِ فِي جَاهِلِيَّةٍ وَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دَارِ الْإِسْلَامِ فَأَمَّا فِي زَمَانٍ مُطْلَقٍ فَلَا جَاهِلِيَّةَ بَعْدَ مَبْعَثِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَإِنَّهُ لَا تَزَالُ مِنْ أُمَّةِ طَائِفَةٍ ظَاهِرِينَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ إِلَى قِيَامِ السَّاعَةِ وَالْجَاهِلِيَّةُ الْمُقَيِّدَةُ قَدْ تَكُونُ فِي بَعْدِ دِيَارِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَشْخَاصِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أربع في أمتي من أمر الجاهلية من أمر الجاهلية وقال لأبي لأبي غرق رضي الله عنه إنكم رؤ فيك جاهلية ونحو ذلك انتع. so in this in the rest of this paragraph that we read the sheikh he goes on to say that about jahiliya is he quotes Ibn Taymiyyah uh, Rahimahullah, uh, uh, and what Ibn Taymiyyah said with regards to uh, ignorance, he said, So, whoever uh, doesn't know the truth, then he is uh, an ignorant upon uh, a simple ignorance, simple, straightforward ignorance. He just doesn't know the truth, however. If he believes in that which is opposite to the truth, then he is of uh, uh, upon an ignorance which they call jahl murakab. So it's more severe. The ignorance is severe. Why? Because this person thinks he knows what's the tr what the truth is, but in fact he's upon other than the truth. That's the worst type. That is the worst type of ignorance one can be upon. Because they're fooling themselves with the, the so-called knowledge that they think they have, which is not knowledge, and they're following the opposite of the truth. Jahl Murakab. And then he goes on to say that he says that in verily, or indeed, that has been clarified, the people of has been clarified to the people before uh, before um uh, the coming of the Prophet. They were upon um ignorance. Uh, ignorance uh, and uh, a general ignorance. So the the door upon uh, things uh, that um, uh, necessitate uh, that was uh, ignorance and what they came with, what they said, their practices, etc., etc. They're upon complete ignorance and and what they did and all the things that they did only uh, um, an ignorant person would do. And then the Sheikh he goes on to say, Shibu <laughs> Taymiyyah continuing uh, this quoted text. He goes on to say, Ma yukhalifu ma jabir mursalun. So it's because they 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 were in opposition to <coughs> they were in opposition to uh, what the messengers uh, came with. Obviously, before Islam, of from the Yahud and from the Nasara Yahud. Not from the Nasara, so that is classed as ignorance. And then uh, the Sheikh mentions, and also that here there's, uh, and he says that that is uh, a general ignorance. However, he says after the sending of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then there's no more of this widespread general ignorance. It, 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 the sending of the Prophet had wiped out, has wiped out this general ignorance that's among the people. It's no longer the case after sending of the Prophet. So let me check and explain this further down the line, inshallah, in this lesson. So he gives some examples. He says, for example, you know, you might find some ignorance in one person, but another. Uh, uh, another. You might find some ignorance in one land, but not another. Uh, you may find uh, ignorance from, um, uh, what does he say here? He says, from um, you know, uh, one uh, you know a person who was upon um, a disbelief. But then when he became Muslim, that ignorance is gone. So depending on places, people, you know, you'll find some ignorance in places, and in other places you may not find any ignorance at all. It's not ignorance everywhere. This is what the Sheikh is saying in our times. And after sending the Prophet Sallam, there's no, there isn't a, such a thing that there's ignorance everywhere. There's, there's pockets of ignorance in places, but we, we can't say after sending of the Prophet that there's ignorance everywhere. 
in complete totality. <clears throat> then the shape goes on to say here. He goes on to say, he says, فَأَمَّا فِي زَمَانِ مُطْلَقْ فَلَا جَهَلِيَّ بَعْدَ مَبَثَ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ So, okay, so we already said that. Uh, I've, already, I've already mentioned that. And then the Shaykh mentions um, a <coughs> couple of hadith here towards the end of this paragraph, and he says, why, and also to corroborate what he's saying, there's uh, this hadith, a uh, well-known hadith, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, there won't cease to be a group upon clear manifest truth, a group of Muslims upon the clear manifest truth, um, uh, in every time there will be a group upon the Quran and Sunnah and the way of the Prophet Sallallahu they will be apparent upon their truth, and they will be in every, uh, they'll be in every place and every time there will be this group, uh, the saved group upon the right, correct path upon the correct religion, according to. Uh, what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, and the Sheikh goes on to say also about ignorance. That, you know, sometimes it's uh, it's in uh, some places and it's not in other places, like he mentioned earlier. And it may be with some people and not with others. And then he mentions another hadith uh, uh, of the Prophet sallam, where the Prophet sallam said he only quotes part of it. Says, uh, "For there are um, there are uh, for." Types of jahiliyyah in my ummah. Ya arba'un fi ummati min amril jahiliyyah. So there's still jahiliyyah within the ummah, but it's not 100% jahiliyyah in all of the ummah. And also this hadith, part of the hadith that was mentioned uh, with regards to uh, Abi Dhar. <coughs> and I'll, I'll read the whole hadith. I've got the whole hadith here actually, just to point the context, inshallah. Um, Give me one second to put this up. <clears throat> the full hadith, inshallah. I'll try and find this, inshallah. I saved it. Actually, I found it now. Bear with me. So, I'll just read in English. We went to Abu Dhar Ghifari in Rabada, and he had a, a mantle over him, and the slave had one like it. We said, Abu Dhar, had you joined them together, it would have been a complete garment. Thereupon he said, there was an altercation between me and one of the persons among my brothers. His mother was a non-Arab. I reproached him for his mother. He complained against me to Allah's apostle, may, uh, may peace be upon him. As I met Allah's apostle, may peace be upon him, he said, Abu Dhar, you are a person who still has in him the remnants of the days of ignorance. Thereupon I said, Allah's messenger, he who abuses other persons, they abuse in return his father and mother. He, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, Abu Dhar, you are a person who still has the remnants of ignorance in him. They, your servants and slaves, are your brothers. Allah has put them in your care. So feed them with what you eat, clothe them with what you wear, and do not burden them beyond their capacities. But if you burden them with an unbearable burden, then help them by sharing their extra burden. So this is the whole hadith, and this is from... Uh, Sahih Muslim, Book 27, Hadith 60, if you can check it out yourselves. So the Sheikh just mentioned this bit, uh, just uh, obviously emphasizing this part with regards to that some of us can still, we carry uh, some jahiliyyah with us, and with knowledge we uh, repel that, or we get rid of it. <clears throat> then the Sheikh continues, he says, مُلَخَّصُ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ الْجَاهِلِيَّةَ نِسْبَةٌ إِلَى الْجَهْلِ وَهُوَ عَدْمُ الْعِلْمِ وَأَنَّهَا so then the Sheikh says, and the summary of what I've said, so the summary of what he said from the book, he says that the ignorance is, um, it is related to uh, um, ignorance, uh, which is the absence of knowledge, and it is of two categories. It's split into two categories. And this is what he's saying. Um, he says, number one, الجاهلية العامة وهي ما كان قبل مبعث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وقد انتهت ببعثه ببعثه. So the first type of ignorance is the uh, general ignorance that was everywhere, everywhere, every place, every time. It was amongst everyone. General ignorance all over. And he says that this was present um, 
before the sending of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it finished and it ceased when the Prophet sallallahu was sent as a messenger of the Prophet. Number two, jahiliyatun khasatun bi ba'd al-duli wa ba'd al-buldani wa ba'd al-ashkasi wa hadhi la tazalu baqiya wa bi hada yatadih khata'an khata'un man yu'ammimun al-jahiliyata fi hada zaman fi yaqulun jahiliyatun hada al-qarn wa jahiliyatu hada al-qarn wa ma shabahu dhalika wa sawab أن يقال جاهلية بعض أهل هذا القرن أو غالب أهل هذا القرن وأما التعميم فلا يصح ولا يجوز لأنه ببئثة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم زالت الجاهلية العامة. So then the second type is specific a specific type of um, uh, ignorance and it's only in some lands or some countries or with some people and not others and it remains and with regard to that then this clarifies a mistake uh, of those who uh, generalize uh, this ignorance and they say it's uh, it's you know it's in it's in our time it's in our time, as in this general one that's no longer present. They generalize it and say, yeah, it is incorrectly. They say, oh, it's the ignorance of this century, the ignorance of the century or this century, uh, or, or what relates to that kind of speech. And the correct uh, stance on this is that one says, um, or rather one says, ignorance of some of the people of this century or ignorance of most of the people of this century. As for generalizing it to everybody, well, that, that's incorrect and does not stand and is impermissible. Because the Sheikh says, as mentioned earlier, um, because after, after the sending of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the general ignorance ceased, it no longer existed. And no longer exists. So we move on to the second uh, topic of this lesson. And the Shaykh mentions here, he says, Al Fisk. Like, we'll, exp we'll explain what Al Fisk is, inshallah, throughout the next few paragraphs. Al Fisk, Lugatan, Al Khuruj, Wal Murad, Bihi, Sharan, Al Khuruj, and Ta'atilahi, Wahua, Yeshmur, Al Khuruj, Al Kuli, or you call it Kufari, Pasik. والخروج الجزئي في فيقال للمؤمن المرتكب لكبيرة من كبائر الذنوب فاسق. so I'll, I'll translate this. so fisk in the in the language linguistically it means leaving or exiting and the and its point and purpose within the legal Islamic meaning uh, the Shara'i meaning uh, is when somebody uh, leaves the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it could be in totality as in leaving the obedience in complete ob leaving all of the obedience for example or it, uh, for, and that would be tantamount to obviously major disbelief and it can also be in part al juzi so it could be a partly disobedient for example the one who um, uh, perpetrates or falls into uh, an act of a major sin so that's partly disobedient he still remains a muslim but he's fallen into a major sin yeah so then the sheikh he says for fisku fiskan he says that this fisk, it's of two types. There's two types of fisk. He says, Fasaka a fiskun yankulu an il millati wahu al kufr, fa yusum al kafir fasikun, fa kadakar Allah iblisa fa kal, fa fasaka an amri rabbi. 
<coughs> and that's from Surah Al-Kahf, verse 15. Then the Shaykh says, وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ الْفِسْقُ مِنْهُ كُفْرًا وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فَسَقُوا فَمَأْوَاهُمُ النَّارِ Surah Al-Sajda, verse 20. يُرِيدُ الْكُفَارِ يُرِيدُ الْكُفَارِ دَلَّ عَلَى ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ كُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا أُرِيدُوا فِيهَا وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ ذُوقُ عَذَابَ النَّارِ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَدِّبُونَ Surah Al-Sajda, verse 20. وَيُسَمَّ وَيُسَمَّ الْعَاصِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسِقًا وَلَمْ يُخْرِجْهُ فِسْقُهُ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ قَالَ تَعَالَى وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءَ فَاجْلِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَةً وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ شَهَادَةً عَبَدًا وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ النور verse 4 وَقَالَ تَعَالَى فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَتَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ البقرة verse 197 وقال العلماء في تفسير الفسوق هنا هو المعاصي so <coughs> let's see what the sheikh is saying here the sheikh says that fisk is of two types and he says the first type of fisk is what takes the person outside of the fold of Islam and that is obviously disbelief kufr and it's called the person is then called a disbeliever Al-Kafir, Fasik. <coughs> and then the Shaykh says, Allah, uh, Allah mentions <coughs> when he said to Iblis in the Surah, uh, as mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, verse 50. And if we have a look at that on the meanings, we'll see what the Shaykh is saying to us. So let's go there. Give me a second. <coughs> So Surah Al-Kahf verse 50. Here we are. He was one of the jinns, i.e. Shaitan, Satan. He was one of the jinns. He disobeyed the command of his Lord. Yeah, so this is what happened. So this is when the Shaykh mentioned here, and this is Kufr. This is related to what is disbelief when Fisk is mentioned here. And then the Shaykh also mentions um, two parts of Surah to Sajda, uh, uh, verse 20, two parts of verse 20. So let's go to Surah to Sajda now and see that, verse 20. So we read this already in Arabic, Ali Dolai. And as for those who are Fasikun, disbelievers and disobedient to Allah, so disbelievers and disobedient to Allah, their abode will be the fire every time they wish to get away therefrom. They will be put back there too. And it will be said to them, taste you the torment of the fire, uh, fire which you used to deny. Yeah, so the Shaykh has mentioned that here as well. Over here as you can see on the cursor. Then the Shaykh mentions another ayah from um, Surah Al-Nur. So let's go there. Verse 4, Surah Al-Nur, verse 4. And those who accuse chaste women and produce not four witnesses, flog them with eighty, uh, flog them eighty times, and reject their testimony forever. They indeed are the fasikun, lies, rebellious, disobedient to Allah. <coughs> so then the Sheikh mentions that this year the mentioning of this. Uh, here he says, "Well, some al asim in the Muslim fasikun alam." So, so this one here is a person who is disobedient. So the fist mentioned in this ayah is related to disobedience but not disbelief. Yeah. And likewise then the shaykh mentioned another ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah uh, and with the same meaning of disobedience. So the shaykh, uh, the shaykh mentioned this ayah, uh, verse 197 from Surah Al-Baqarah and the scholars say that the meaning of fisk of fusuk here, uh, here it is... Um, uh, disobedience, yeah, disobedience. So we'll go on to the third subject of the fourth, inshallah. So we're getting towards the end of the lesson, inshallah. Um, al-dalal, and al-dalal can mean 
the number of meanings as the Shaykh will explain to us. For example, misguided, lost, etc. Well, the Shaykh will explain it to us, inshallah. So he says, Ad-Dalal, Al-Udul an al-Tariq al-Mustaqim wa huwa diddu al-Hidaya qala ta'ala man ihtada fa inna ma yahtadi li nafsihi wa man dhalla wa man dhalla fa inna ma yadillu alayha Surah Al-Isra verse 15. So here, the Shaykh says that Ad-Dalal, this word Ad-Dalal, it is to do with um, abandoning and turning away from the straight path and it is the opposite of guidance then so it's misguidance misguide being misguided misguidance and turning away from the right the right path the straight path and then the sheikh brings uh, a, a verse a verse 15 from surah al-isra part of that and let's read it inshallah Whoever goes right, then he goes right only for the benefit of his own self. Yeah, so this is what uh, uh, the Sheikh mentioned. And he also mentions, and whoever goes astray, then he goes astray to his own loss. And the Sheikh, he says here, then he breaks this down for us. This misguidance of dalal or loss. وَالضَّلَالُ يُطْلَقُ عَلَىٰ إِدَّةِ مَعَانٍ And this is important to understand now, this bit. He says that this word of dalal, misguidance or loss, it, it it's um it it can mean it can mean a number of meanings. It can come with a number of meanings depending on the context. He says, and there's and there's, as you can see, there's six different meanings here. So let's go through each one one by one, inshallah. Number one, Fataratan Yutlaku Alal Kufri Kala Ta'ala Woman Yakfur Billahi Wamala Ikati wa kutubihi. وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَقَدْ ظَلَّ ذَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Surah Nisa verse 136 So the Sheikh says sometimes it can come with the meaning of disbelief, kufr as in this ayah that the Sheikh mentioned let's go and have a look at the meanings of the ayah Surah Nisa verse 136 Here we are And whosoever disbelieves in Allah his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, then indeed he has strayed far away. Point number two. وَتَارَةً يُطْلَقُوا عَلَى الشِّرْكِ قَالَ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ ظَلَّ ظَلَالٌ بَعِيدًا Surah An-Nisa, verse 116. And sometimes it can come with the meaning of shirk. And the ayah here is from Surah An-Nisa again, verse 116, where Allah says, and whoever said so partners in worship with Allah has indeed strayed far away. Number three. وَتَارَةً يُطْلَقُوا عَلَى الْمُخَالَفَةِ الَّتِي هِيَ دُونَ الْكُفْرِ كَمَا يُقَالَ الْفِرْقِ الظَّالَةِ أي المخالفة. And sometimes you can come with the meaning um, with regards to uh, um, uh, opposing something from the deen. Opposing or being in opposition to the deen which is other than disbelief. Uh, as the Sheikh says, as they say, for example, um, the uh, the um, misguided uh, groups and sects. Why? Because there is um, they are upon opposition to the authentic Quran and Sunnah. The authentic uh, uh, the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. They are they're in opposition to the pure religion. Point number four. وَتَارَةً يُطْلَقُ عَلَى الْخَطَأِ وَمِنْهُ قول موسى عليه السلام قال فعلتها إذا وأنا من الظالين سورة الشعراء verse twenty and sometimes it can mean a mistake the lal can mean mean a mistake as in uh, where the sheikh quotes uh, this ayah from uh, from سورة الشعراء verse twenty um, where uh, موسى عليه السلام says let's just uh, get pulled out where موسى عليه السلام said, I did it then when I was an ignorant as regards to my Lord and his message. Obviously, if you want more clarity on that, you can go back there and read the verses before as well and after. Inshallah yourselves. Point five. وَتَارَةً يُطْلَقُوا عَلَى النِّسْيَانِ وَمِنْهُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَن تَظِلَّ إِحْدَاهُمَا فَتُذَكِّرْ إِحْدَاهُمَا الْأُخْرَىٰ Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 282. And the Sheikh says, Number five, sometimes it can mean 
or can relate to the meaning of forgetfulness. It could mean it could mean forgetfulness. And the ayah that the Shaykh mentioned for Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 200, uh, verse 282, if we go there, it's a long verse, so let me try and find this. Hold on a sec. Uh, yeah, here we go. So it's a long ayah. Then I'll read from here. Then a man and two women, such as you agree for witnesses. So that it, so that if one of them, two women, errs, the other can remind her. So refer to the whole ayah, this is to do with um, um, when somebody takes out a loan, that there should be witnesses there and writing it down. Yeah, so uh, refer that for the full context. But with regards to what the Sheikh is saying here about forgetfulness. Yeah, so the law can mean forgetfulness. And the final uh, meaning of zalal or misguidance, it can mean, the Sheikh says, wa yutlaku, wa yutlaku zalal. Um, and finally, um, this word can uh, can uh, can also come with the meaning of loss when you've lost something or something has lost its way. For example, when a livestock, for example, uh, the sheikh mentioned camel here. We'll just use the general term: livestock uh, has lost its way. You know, the herder is uh, herding some sheep. And one disappears and moves along and goes and goes to another another way, another path. It's vol, yeah. It's lost its way. So it can mean this as well. For example, final topic or subject of today is aridda. <coughs> aridda wa akamuha. So the Sheikh will explain what aridda means. But aridda is when you turn away from your deen, when you reject your deen and you leave it. And the Sheikh will explain in more detail, inshallah, in the next five to ten minutes. So the Sheikh says, Aridda tu waqsamuha wa ahkamuha. So Aridda, uh, its types and its rulings. He says the linguistic uh, meaning, he says, Aridda tu lugatan ruju. Qala ta'ala, wa la tartaddu ala adbarikum. Ay la tarji'u. Wa ridda fil istilah al fiqhi hi al kufr ba'd al islam. Qala ta'ala, wa man yartadid minkum an dinihi fa yamut wa huwa kafirun fa ulaika. Habitat Amaluhum fit dunya wal ahirati wa ulaika as habun nari hum fiha khalidun. That's from Surah Al Baqarah, verse 217. And the first ayah that we mentioned is from uh, Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 21. So let's have a look at that before the Shaykh uh, talks about the types of uh, um, Ridda. <coughs> let's go to the ayah. First ayah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 21. Where Allah says, And turn not back in flight, for then you will be returned as losers. So, the Sheikh says, in the linguistic term, in, 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 the, in, in the language, it means to return, or to go back. That's what it means, to go back. And in the, in uh, Islamically, in our, from the, our religion, the religious meaning, of it is disbelief that when a person he is a Muslim and he returns to the disbelief he was upon for example or he goes away from Islam and leaves it this is what it means yeah can't remember the English word for it right now if it, if it comes to me inshallah I'll mention it um, uh, and then the Sheikh mentions uh uh, yeah, apostate, that's it, apostate. So Aridda is apostate in English, that's the best word to describe it with. Um, then the Sheikh mentions Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 217, let's go there. <coughs> Which part of the ayah was this? Uh, I think this was towards the end. Uh, yeah, so towards the end of this ayah, where Allah Jalla wa'ala says, And whosoever of you turns back from his religion, and dies as a disbeliever, then his deeds will be lost in this life and in the hereafter, and they will be the dwellers of the fire. They will abide therein forever. So this is, that should clarify for us um, the meaning of a ridda, apostasy, and uh, uh, what's related to it. Now the Sheikh says, it's types, aksamuha. A ridda tu tahsulu birtikabi nafidim min nawakir al-Islam 
ونوافد الإسلام كثيرة ترجع وترجع إلى أربعة أقسام هي so whoever uh, was in the lessons of um, the nullifiers of Islam then they'll know about this inshallah uh, and hopefully it'll remind them as well so the Sheikh says it's types he says apostasy uh, it's uh, a, a person reaches apostasy by perpetrating or falling into one of the nullifiers of Islam and the Sheikh says there are many nullifiers and these nullifiers go back to four main principles and every one of us should know these and remind ourselves of these he says they are number one Ariddatu bil qawl number two Ariddatu bil fi'l number three Ariddatu bil i'tiqad number four Ariddatu bil shak so the first type it's apostasy by what you say on your tongue. Number two, apostasy by what you do. Number three, apostasy about what you believe in your heart. And number four, apostasy by doubt. The doubt that's within your heart about that which Allah revealed and the Prophet ﷺ came with. Or any of that which preceded in these points. Yeah? So let's break it down. The Sheikh says, uh, apostasy by a uh, saying, so use it, but by way of your tongue and speech. He says, Kasab billahi ta'ala or Rusuli sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or malaikatihi or ahad min Rusulihi or with the eye ilm al ghaib or with the eye in Nubuwa or Tasdeep min yediha or dua ghair lahi or istiga fati afon or istianati bihi fima la yakhtir walahi illallah. So, by tongue, by way of your tongue, by saying, this is if somebody insults Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or insults his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or insults the angels or any of the messengers or prophets or uh, claims that he has the knowledge of the unseen or claims that he uh, has been given prophethood or or anybody who believes the one who claims any of that. Or the person uh, who uh, calls to other than Allah, or uh, who supplicates, who does dua to other than Allah, or the one who seeks aid from other than Allah, for that which the person is not capable of. What does that mean? It might sound a bit ambiguous. That means that, of course, you can ask help from somebody who is capable of doing it, if I was to ask some of you, oh, can you help me uh, with uh, uh, picking up some tools from my car, for example, if you're able to do it, you're capable, of course. So I'm seeking aid in that which is right, uh, rightful from you. Why? Because you're present there, you're capable, and you're able to do it, and you're present. That's the legitimate way, yeah? Here's the wrong way. Okay, I need some help, yeah? So, for example, let's just use a, uh, an example. You know, I'm having a hard time, you know, I, I, um, you know, instead of raising my hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking aid from Him, um, uh, you know, I'm in a financial difficulty where nobody can help me. I'm really down in the, you know, in the gutters with the situation. Uh, and you know that only Allah can help you in this. And then you go to some grave or someone else who, who's not able to help you in anything of that matter, for example, then this is what uh, this means here. When you're wrongfully seeking aid with other than Allah in that which they have no ability or capability and neither the present. So people go to graves and ask for things. You know, or, oh Allah, uh, they'll say, no, they won't say, oh Allah. They'll go and say, oh so-and-so, fulan, wa alan, um, uh, uh, you know, um, I've come here, you know, give me, uh, I, you know, I want to get pregnant, or I want money, uh, please ease my affairs, I'm in such a difficulty. They go into somebody who's dead in the grave, who can't do anything for themselves, uh, let alone do anything for you. And they're not even present. They're in the barzakh, they're no longer in this dunya, they're not in the world. They're not here. Rather, they should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a bit more detail on that mentioned. And then finally, the Shaykh says, and also uh, seeking refuge in uh, other than Allah. Likewise. 
we should only be seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Number two, apostasy by doing something, an action. The Shaykh says, فَالسُّجُودِ لِسَنَمْ وَالشَّجَرِ وَالْحَجَرِ وَالْقُبُورِ وَالْذَرْفِ لَا وَإِلْقَاءِ الْمُصْحَفِ الْمَوَاطِنِ الْقَذِرَ وَأَمْنَ السِّحْرِ وَتَعْلِمُ وَتَعْلِيمُ وَالْحُكْمِ بِغَيْرِ مَا عَزَلَ اللَّهُ مُعْتَقِدًا حِلُّ So then the Shaykh says, in, in terms of action now, apostasy, you're attaining apostasy or fall, falling into apostasy by way of action. I.e., he gives some examples. For example, uh, prostrating uh, to uh, prostrating uh, to a tomb, to a grave, and things like this. Yeah? Uh, prostrating to a stone, a grave, and other than that, a tomb, uh, and also um, sacrificing for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or sacrificing to these things that are not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So the, from the creation of Allah, you're, you're worshipping one of the creations of Allah, which obviously is shirk, and then sacrificing to it as well. is just adding to the pain of it all. <coughs> the Shaykh goes on to say, for example, throwing a copy of the Quran in dirty places and um, uh, doing the works of magic, learning it, teaching it, uh, and <coughs> And the likes of that, and also ruling um, by other than what Allah sent down, believing that is permissible. So that's an important thing to understand. This is a condition that if somebody rules with other than what Allah sent down and believes it is permissible to do so, then he's, he's an apostate. But if he doesn't believe it's permissible but does it, there's a different ruling to that. Obviously, he's not apostate, yeah. So we need to understand these things properly as they should be understood. And then the Shaykh also say, point three, apostasy uh, by way of belief. So apostasy by way of belief. He says, كَعْتِقَادِ الشَّرِيكِ لِلَّهِ أَوْ أَنَّ الزِّنَا وَالْخَمَرْ وَالْرِبَى حَلَالِ أَوْ أَنَّ الْخُبْزَ حَرَامِ أَوْ أَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ غَيْرَ وَاجِبَةً وَنَحْوَ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا عَجْمَ عَلَى حِلِّهِ أَوْ حُرْمَتِهِ أَوْ وُجُوبِهِ إِجْمَاءً قَطْعِيًا وَمِثْلُهُ لَا يَجْهَلُهُ so the Sheikh says here, towards the end of this lesson, he says, like, um, uh, so apostasy by way of belief, uh, such as um, believing that Allah has a partner, uh, or uh, believing that um, fornication and um, uh, alcohol and, uh, and interest usually is halal. Yeah, is halal. Uh, or that, for example, a simple example the Sheikh brings, he says bread, for example, a believing or somebody saying that bread is haram, when we know bread is halal, yeah, bread is haram, for example. Or if somebody says, for example, or believes that the prayer is not obligatory upon, the, upon them, and we know that we have five obligatory daily prayers, yeah, uh, um, ob uh, um, obligated upon every single Muslim, yeah. <coughs> And the likes of those examples, the Sheikh says that the the that the scholars have agreed upon, yeah, and it's well known in our religion that it's permissible or it's haram or it's an obligation, yeah, and it's clear, you know, like some of the examples the Sheikh has given us, dead clear examples, super clear examples, and that we those examples we can't be ignorant of. Every every Muslim knows that, surely, yeah. Finally, the apostasy of doubt. In, I think that which uh, has already been mentioned in those previous points. The Sheikh says, كَمَنْ شَكَّ فِي تَحْرِيمَ الشِّرْكِ أو تَحْرِيمَ الزِّنَا وَالْخَمَرِ أو فِي حَلِّ الْخُبْزِ أو شَكْ فِي رِسَالَةِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو رسالة غيره من الأنبياء أو في صدقه أو في دين الإسلام أو في صلاحية لهذا الزمان So then the Sheikh says, <coughs> having doubts in any of the aforementioned things, he says, like, having doubt in the uh, impermissibility of shirk or the impermissibility of fornication and alcohol or having doubts in the permissibility of eating bread, for example, or uh, um, having doubts in the messengership of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or any of the messengers other than him and the prophets. 
or having doubt in the Prophet's uh, truthfulness, yeah, uh, or having doubts in the uh, the religion of Islam and in, and in its uprightness for this time and place, for example. These are all come under this uh, section of having doubt and this leads to apostasy as well because of the doubt in these affairs which are clear, basically they're clear and uh, there's no way that you can have doubt unless you know you don't believe in them, you know, properly or you haven't attained enough knowledge uh, or asked to clarify these affairs, yeah. Then the Sheikh says, وَأَحْكَامُهَا الَّتِي تَتَرَتَّبَ عَلَيْهَا بَعْدَ ثُبُوتِهَا Then there are um, um, uh, rulings uh, that come, or uh, there are rulings that are necessitated after uh, all of what we mentioned before, or the Sheikh mentioned before, uh, uh, has been affirmed and consolidated, for example. For example, um, if the person has fallen into apostasy, then the Sheikh, I will translate, uh, I'll translate this straight away now because we're getting towards uh, the end of the lesson. So I won't read Arabic for this section. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> so the Sheikh says, first point, um, he says that if somebody uh, falls into apostasy, then uh, what happens? The person has the chance to um, repent. The apostate has a chance to repent. If he repents, and if he returns to Islam within three days, then he's forgiven, right? Because there's a there's a time frame he's allowed to reflect. Because maybe he doesn't know things. Maybe he hasn't had something explained to him. Maybe somebody put a doubt in his head. You know what I mean? So this is to give him time to reflect. And the scholars, whoever are there, they will sit with him. They will his sit with him or her, whoever it is, and they'll explain the affairs and try to clarify to this person to return back to the truth. Point number two, if the person refuses to repent, then it's obligatory to uh, execute this person. Uh, due to the speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, whoever changes his religion after, his, uh, uh, after accepting Islam, then, then kill him. And then the point number three here, the uh, uh, Sheikh mentioned, he says, "Yamna uh, min tasarruf fi mali fi mudat istitabati fa inna aslam fa walahu." Okay, so this is to do with um, uh, with regards to his wealth and what he has of his possessions. So, um, if the person goes back and returns to Islam, then his wealth and everything they had is for him. However, um, if he doesn't, then he goes to uh, the land that he's in, as in if, in if he was in a Muslim country, of this would happen in a Muslim country, then that money would be used for the benefit of the Muslim and Islamic society within that country. Yeah, in, 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 in summary. Point four, uh, if the person dies an apostate, then whatever inheritance or whatever is that is left behind, uh, nobody inherits it because he died a disbeliever and a disbeliever cannot be inherited from. So there is no inheritor and there, he's not in, 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 uh, there's no inheritors there. For that, and he can't uh, uh, give anything of his inheritance. Yep. And finally, point five, the Sheikh says, and if the person dies an apostate, yeah, he, he's not washed. Like, you know, the Muslims, okay. So he dies an apostate, he dies a disbeliever. He is not washed. He's not covered. Uh, he's not buried uh, uh, with the, the Muslims. He's not washed or cleaned or any ghusl. None of that is done. And uh, he is not buried in the... He's not... Uh, uh, he's, he, there's no grave for him within the graves of the Muslims in the maqabir of the Muslimin. Rather, he is either uh, uh, you know buried with the disbelievers or buried anywhere else far away from the uh, the Muslim graves uh, and uh, dug up there and left. That's it. That's the ending of a person who dies upon apostasy because of the truth that he had left. And inshallah, we'll we'll. Uh, We'll end the lesson there. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nubiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.